Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at Manhattan by Andreas Seafarth, with art by Zilbeck and Notzek Design Company, published by Hans M. Glick and distributed by Rio Grande. The game is for 2-4 players and should play in about 45 minutes. In the game, players are building skyscrapers in six cities around the world. Inside the box you get an instruction booklet, a board, 45 cards, 5 each of the 9 different locations, 25 buildings in each of the four player colors, and a start player marker. The buildings are broken into four different types, one story, two story, three story, and four story. Each player sacrifices one of their one story buildings to use as a score marker. Now let's take a look closer look at the cards. One of the brilliant things about the game is that the cards play differently for each player depending on where they are sitting. The red square on the card indicates which square can be played in, but it depends on where the player is sitting. If this player plays this card, they may play in any of these squares, but if this player plays it, they may play into these squares, this player into these squares, and this into these. Before the start of the game, deal four cards to each player, then select a start player and they receive the yellow start player marker. The game plays slightly differently with each number of players playing, but we will take a look at the four player game. A four player game is broken into four rounds. Before each round, each player will select six of their hotels to play with this round. On a player's turn, they play a card, place their hotel in one of the six cities on the square indicated on the card they played, and then draw a card. Now let's take a look at placing hotels. Whoever has the top building of a hotel owns the hotel. When placing buildings onto a hotel, you have to tie or beat the number of stories the owner has. So when you're the first to place, you may play any number of stories. When someone plays on top of you, they have to at least tie how many you placed. Any floors you add to this hotel count to your total number of floors. So now orange has four stories here. Black still has one. For black to play here again, they must place at least three floors. For another player to place here, they must play at least four. As the game goes on, hotels may get to the point where you can no longer place there because you can't tie or beat the number of stories that the owner has. Players take turns placing buildings until all six of their selected buildings are played. This is the end of the round. The round is then scored. The tallest hotel on the entire board earns its owner three points. Players with a majority in each city earn two points per city where they have a majority. No points are given for ties. Then each player gets one point for each hotel they own. Remember, you only own hotels if your color is on top. Players then select another six hotels. The start player moves to the player on the left and another round is played. This happens a total of four times, and the player with the most points at the end wins. The rulebook has no resolution for ties, which oddly enough happened to me for the first time during the play I did for this video, so apparently it ends in a tie. I suggest the tied player with the tallest building then wins. For a three-player game, the players play six rounds of four buildings each, and in a two-player game, each player plays two colors and combines those two scores at the end of the game. And that's Manhattan. It's a pretty fast game, it can be a little mean, but I like that about it. Players really have to choose carefully which battles to fight and where to try to gain majorities while keeping other players in check. It has a lot of nice decisions, but anyone can play it, which is a huge plus. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite games. I give it an 8 out of 10.